Hey y'all, Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. In today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this teacher's appreciation Tumblr. This Tumblr is super cute and it's really beginner friendly. Like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including some direct links and coupon codes. And don't forget, you can find me on all of my socials, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. For this design, I am using a 20 ounce stick from Makerflow Crafts. I will have them linked in my description below. I prepped this tumbler by using a 180 grit sanding block. I sanded the entire tumbler and then I wiped the tumbler down with 91% alcohol. Once that alcohol dried, I went outside and I spray painted my tumbler. I just used a white spray paint. It does not have to be a matte finish. You can use a satin or gloss finish. Then I let that dry for about 20 to 25 minutes. And now we're going to add the epoxy to the tumbler. So again, this is a 20 ounce tumbler. I mixed a total of 30 mLs of epoxy together. That's 15 mLs part A and 15 mLs of part B, totaling 30 mLs of epoxy. You want to make sure that you mix this epoxy together the recommended mix time that's on your epoxy the epoxy that i use is from flynn sister supply shop i'll have a coupon code on the screen for you and then also their direct link and the coupon code listed in the description below now i am adding some glitter and paint to this epoxy so first you want to make sure you mix this epoxy well and then we're going to add some paint i am using this Illuminlight resin dye this is white. If you don't have this on hand, you can always use acrylic paint. I am using just a drop of this and this is actually like the second time I've used this and I really like this paint or this dye because it's very concentrated and you only need just a little bit. But again, if you don't have this on hand, you can always use acrylic paint or you can use some acrylic paint and mix with some acrylic or um, alcohol ink to get your uh, color that you need. So I added just a little tiny bit of that white dye to this epoxy and you can see that it mixes very well. Whenever you do add your paint to your epoxy, you wanna make sure you keep mixing until you see one solid color and those like lines and the epoxy is completely gone where it's that one solid color. So once I add the dye to my epoxy, I'm going to add some glitter to my epoxy as well. The glitter that I am adding is from Glitter Heart Co. I am adding Diamonds 3.0. Again, I will have a coupon code listed on the screen and then their website will be listed in my description below. When it comes to adding the glitter, add as much or as little as you want into your cup. I don't know how much glitter I added, but I made sure to show you on the camera so you can have an idea of the approximate measurements but I just add until my little heart is happy and you can see I'm adding more because you can always add more glitter. <laughs> so make sure that's nice and stirred. You're going to see your epoxy get a little thick as you saw mine. That's okay. That's just because you're adding glitter and paint to your epoxy so it's not going to be as thin. But this is a very thick consistency and with that resin dye, uh, it makes it very um, uh, pigmented and so it's not as translucent. So it looks really nice on that white tumbler. Now that you have your epoxy mixed together, going to turn on your cup turner and then apply this mixture all over your, your tumbler. So this is a really good like hack or really quick way to add your glitter and paint to your tumbler without painting your tumbler, adding your epoxy, then adding your glitter and then having to re-epoxy over it. So I always like to do this whenever I'm either in a hurry or if I want a nice solid a, like white tumbler because I just place the white behind the white paint or in front of the white paint and then it turns out really really nice and you have that nice shimmer and you can always add different colors to this you can add mica powders you can add like I said any type of paint or inks that you have on hand to get that epoxied color the way that you want to be colored and don't worry, whenever you first place your epoxy on your tumbler, it's going to be really lumpy and bumpy as you see here. But once you add it to your tumbler, once your tumbler spins on the cup turner for a couple minutes, it really does even out. I personally don't add any heat to this epoxy because using Flynn Sister Supply Shop epoxy and how my humidity is in Florida, I do not add any heat to 
my epoxy. Um, because when I do add heat personally, it starts getting bubbles in the epoxy. So I don't with this specific epoxy, but other epoxies that I've used in the past, I'd have to add heat unless it would get bubbles. So this is kind of like a trial and error. Once you get your epoxy, once you find a brand you like, and you have to just kind of experiment to see if you do add heat or not. But you can see my tumbler is starting to even out now that the tumbler has been spinning for a couple moments. So once I'm finished applying my epoxy to the tumbler, I'm going to continue to let this tumbler spin on the cup turner for about four hours. I'm then going to turn off my cup turner and let it air dry or air cure for another 20 hours. I want a full 24 hours cure on this tumbler before moving on to the next step. And you can take this off the turner and place your tumbler on a drying rack. I get that question a lot. After the four hours, all it needs to do is air dry. The tumbler does not have to spin anymore. Do so you wanna make sure you have the 24 hours? So once this is finished, finished curing, curing, <laughs> I'll see y'all for the next step. All right, so my tumbler's been cured for 24 hours now. I'm going to remove it from the cup turner, and all I'm doing for this step is I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm cutting or trimming that excess epoxy from the rim of the tumbler. I do this after every epoxy step just to make that final cleanup process a little easier. Once I'm finished with this, I'm taking an 180 grit sanding block and I'm sanding around the rim of the tumbler and I'm exposing the tiniest bit of stainless steel on the rim, just so when I apply that final coat of epoxy, that final coat of epoxy is going to seal on that lip or the very top of the cup to have a nice seal so that epoxy won't, won't come off the tumbler easily. So for this tumbler, I did not need to add another coat of epoxy. I did not need to sand the entire tumbler. It dried and cured pretty evenly. But if you do need to sand your tumbler, I would recommend you sanding your tumbler with a 200 grit sanding block and sand lightly. You do not want to sand away that glitter that you have in that epoxy. Also, if you need to add another coat of epoxy, you would sand, wipe your tumbler down with your 91% alcohol, and then apply a thin coat of epoxy over this design. I would apply maybe 15 mLs of epoxy over this. But again, I don't need to add any epoxy because it did dry pretty evenly and just how I would like it. And it didn't have any bumps. So all I did was sand the rim of the tumbler as you see me doing here. Once I was finished sanding the tumbler, I took some 91% alcohol and I wiped around the rim of the tumbler just to clean up any sanding dust that may have been stuck to the top of the tumbler. And here comes the fun part. So what I recommend is you placing your tumbler back on a cup turner, make sure your cup turner is nice and secure. You wanna make sure your tumbler is facing towards you. This is the, for me personally, the easiest way that I think the setup should be. And then since I've touched the tumbler some, I'm gonna take my 91% alcohol and wipe the tumbler with some 91% alcohol and then let your tumbler dry. So to make the, the colors on the bottom, I am using some alcohol inks. And again, these inks are from Glitter Heart Co. I'll add the colors and everything on the screen, and then I'll add the colors in my description below, including the Glitter Heart Co's website and a coupon code. When you are working with alcohol inks, make sure you do put on your gloves, as you see I'm doing here. And then I'm going to show you all of the colors that I'm placing on the tumbler once I get these gloves on. <laughs> I'm also wearing my apron just in case any of the colors splash back at me. Alcohol ink for me stains my clothes. It does not come out in the, in the wash, so I always make sure I add my apron. So these are the colors I chose. I wanted it to match my decal that I'm adding on my tumbler. And every time when you think of a teacher, you think of like the primary colors and um, the secondary colors. So that's why I chose my red, yellow, blue, and then some green and purple. You can add orange, you can add any, any other color you like, but I try to keep it to match the decal that I'm going to be placing on this tumbler. To create that effect for the colors rolling up the tumbler, you're going to need a 
duster bottle thing for electronics. <laughs> so I have this duster on hand that um, I use around the house. If you don't have this duster, the way that I've done this before is I've taken a straw and I've blown air on the cup and you'll see how I just blow this on the cup. But I just take a straw and I blow the air on the tumbler. I also have this that I first tried, but it wasn't enough force to really put those inks on the tumbler and roll them up the tumbler. So I thought I'd show you this, but for me, that one didn't really work. The duster worked perfectly. So a couple tips, make sure you have some paper towels on hand just in case you need them and make sure all of your alcohol inks are opened. So I took all the tops off the inks. And so I first go in with the lightest color, yellow, and I wanted to try this little tool that I have, but I mean, it's working but I don't have any patience, so I wanted it to go a little bit quicker and I wanted the ink to go further on the tumbler. So with the duster, it not only dries the ink quicker, but it also just, you'll see it, just sprays on the tumbler really quickly. If you have this, you can use it, but if you don't have any patience like me, just buy a duster <laughs> off of Amazon and I'll post it in my description below. So I decided let's try this duster and let's see the difference. So I'm continuing just to use the yellow because it's lighter and I don't wanna really mess up the cup, but this is me just not even like full force the trigger or whatever the heck it's called, but I'm like halfway, like I am like SpongeBob using his pinky toe when he's driving his car. So you wanna make sure you're putting a little bit pressure on that handle or trigger so it's not going all the way up the tumbler. I'm doing little spurts at a time. If you pull that thing all the way back, that ink is going to go up past the end of the tumbler onto your arm. So you can see I'm doing it very slowly and I'm trying to take my time. And then want, you wanna make sure that whenever you're adding the ink to the tumbler, that you're adding it on the very top. So you see I'm moving that tumbler. And so I added the purple and then I'm probably gonna add a little more maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So when I add my next color, I'm going to roll that tumbler and I'm going to make sure that it's, see how I'm rolling it? I wanna make sure that it's right there because if you're not adding at the very peak or the top of the tumbler, that uh, ink is going to roll either left or right wherever gravity takes over. So you wanna make sure that it's, I don't know, straight or even. Does that make sense? You said yes? Okay, perfect. <laughs> So I'm going to fast forward this part um, just because it's just placing the ink on the tumbler and just lightly pressing down on that trigger to make sure to get that nice little blah effect. <laughs> um, and then you just kind of just overlap the colors. Just keep in mind colors mix. So you don't want any green mixing with yellow and blue because it's gonna look like dookie. So make sure that you're adding those colors and you're getting a nice mixture. I started mixing these colors a little bit and I'm like, oh, here comes a dookie. But thankfully it all worked out and it, and it looked really pretty with the colors mixing. So choose your colors wisely. Also alcohol inks dries very, very quickly. Make sure before you're moving, that cup to the next color that that ink is very very dried because if it's not dried then it's going to roll down the cup but like i said it dries very quickly another thing if you do kind of mess up you can use your 91 percent alcohol and you can remove that alcohol ink it's not going to remove it immediately but you can kind of erase it that's why i started with the lighter color because if i use that alcohol the 91 percent alcohol i could have removed that yellow and kind of start it over. So it's really this easy. So I'm just going around the cup and I'm trying to make it all beautiful. And if you see the bottom of my cup, it looks like blank. Like I didn't really like how it looked at the very bottom. Like you can see the white spaces. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to show you how I fix that to make it all kind of go together and look like it's coming from the bottom of the cup. So I'm gonna show you now, I guess. So now I took some alcohol ink and I just, place the color on my glove. Like I started with the yellow and I just went and I blotted the yellow on the cup. And then you're going to see me switch to like the blue, the purple, and I just kind of took that color and I carried it from that area and I blotted it just like that to try to make that kind of go together and not blend as like harshly. I try to make it like a soft blend. And I just did that with every single color. Easy as that. 
And for the bottom, I did one little test strand there before I wanted to record it. But I took the ink and I let it roll down the bottom. It's still on the tumbler and then I just sprayed it with the duster. So I let this one roll and I just moved it around. I just took like three or four colors and then I did basically the same thing, but just like a different way, if that makes sense. I always place my business logo on the bottom. So I wasn't too worried about how the bottom looked, but I didn't want it to look very plain, but it's easy as that. It's, it's so, so simple and it's really, really fun. <laughs> So here's my tumbler after like two or three minutes after I did the bottom. This is with all the ink on here. My next step is adding the decal to my tumbler. I'm using a UV DTF decal that you can purchase from my website. I'm using the middle decal that says teachers plant seeds that grow forever. If you do purchase this UV DTF decal, you will get all three of them and you're able to cut them out and place them individually on your design or tumblers. So first I'm just going to use my scissors and cut these decals just as you see. You don't have to have anything fancy, you just use your craft scissors. And then I'm going to take my 90.0% alcohol and I'm going to wipe down the area of where I'm going to place the decal. This decal is a little bigger so I wanted to make sure I had enough space to add this decal to the tumbler. So you're going to see me kind of move this tumbler around just to get a good nice area to place the decal where it's not really overlapping on the inks. Now, as a reminder, 91% alcohol does remove those alcohol inks, so make sure you're not getting it on the inks and you're just getting it on the area where there's no inks. So like I said in the beginning, this is a beginner friendly tumbler tutorial. So I'm going to show all of my beginners how to place the UV DTF decals on your tumbler. If you already know how to do this, you can fast forward through this part. So I'm going to take my UV DTF decal and I'm going to peel the backing off. Once you peel this backing off, it's going to be a sticky adhesive. So you want to make sure that it all peels off. This is just like vinyl. So if you do need to use a squeegee, just kind of press down hard on this decal to make sure all of that design stays on uh, one piece. So you want to make sure it stays on the sticky piece. So slowly peel this off and really focus to make sure you're lifting all of that design on the top piece. And then you're going to remove the bottom piece completely and you can trash that, burn it, do whatever you want with it. So once that's completely removed, that backing is going to be sticky. So it's just like vinyl. Wherever you place that, that's where it's going to get placed. So be careful on placing your decal on your tumbler and make sure it's straight. So you're going to line it up just like as you would some vinyl. And for me, I did not line this up right. <laughs> it was crooked and it drove me crazy. So you'll see how I fix it here in a second. So I placed my decal on my tumbler and you want to make sure that you're pressing very firmly on the tumbler. You want to make sure that the design is stuck to the tumbler you don't necessarily need that plastic piece to be stuck. So I'm focusing on the letters and the design itself. Once it's placed on the tumbler, um, sometimes I use a squeegee, sometimes I don't, but all I'm doing is I'm pressing firmly on the tumbler to make sure that the design is adhered to the tumbler properly because the next step is removing that backing. If you see the top of my tumbler there, that backing is, is sticking up that's going to be removed to the t from the tumbler and then you're going to have that vinyl or that uh, decal placed in the tumbler and left there. I know that was a lot of information, but I hope that I explained it clearly and nice for y'all. So what I do is I, like I said, I, I make sure that I'm just placing pressure on the design because just like vinyl, once you lift up that transfer tape, sometimes it lifts that design with it or that vinyl with it. This is the same thing. This is like the transfer tape of the UV DTF decal. Once I make sure I have enough pressure placed on that design, I'm slowly peeling that transfer tape from my tumbler, just as I would if it was transfer tape from vinyl. And then you have your decal um, stuck to the tumbler. If some of the design starts to peel up, 
you'll place that transfer tape back on the tumbler and you'll apply more pressure to make sure that design is completely adhered to the tumbler. Once I was finished removing the transfer tape, I took my tumbler off the turner and this thing is crooked. <laughs> I was so upset. I never typically place my design on the turner like that and place my transfer tape, like my decals like that. So I went back with my X-Acto knife and I just removed the that grow forever part with my little scraper tool here. And then all I did was once I was completely moved, removed, I took another design, the same exact design, and all I did was cut out that same area. And then I applied that to the tumbler to make it straight. And guess what? To me, it still looks crooked. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if it's just my, me just being hard on myself, but something's just not right with it, you know? But you know, I don't think anybody notices but myself, but that's what happens whenever you're a crafter, you become, you know, just very critical of your designs and you wanna make sure that it's perfect and you will spend hours and hours to make sure that it's perfect. So this is what the cool thing about um, these UV DT DTF, geez, can they have an easier name? This is what's easier about these uh, decals is that you can pick apart the des these designs and just add it right back to the area. So just as I did, since I sell these, I had like 30 or 40 on hand. So I was able to just take another one and add it right back to the tumbler. Then I removed that backing. So once I was finished with this part, I did not go right into epoxy in my tumbler because I wanna make sure that my alcohol ink is completely dried. If you would epoxy your tumbler right after you apply your decal, your alcohol ink is going to fade. I don't know why, but the epoxy fades the alcohol inks. So I let my cup completely dry, air dry just like this on the turner for at least eight hours before I epoxy my tumbler. The reason why I do the eight hours is because I'd rather be safe than sorry. Again, I've went in with epoxy with my tumbler, with my alcohol ink completely freshly done within like an hour and it's faded and it doesn't look as fresh and vibrant. So if you spray this, it's not going to look like the same design. So you can't spray it with an acrylic sealer. If you put an acrylic sealer over this now, it's going to spread the colors around. So the best thing and I know it takes so long to do is to just let this air dry for a minimum of eight hours before applying your epoxy to the tumbler and once my tumbler was cured for eight hours I went in with some more Flynn sister supply shop epoxy I did two coats of epoxy on this tumbler so you will see I have a lot of uh, epoxy in this cup but it's because I do a lot of tumblers at one time so I applied the first coat of epoxy 15 mls total so 7.5 plus 7.5 part a and part b totaling 15 mls I did a really thin coat of epoxy for the first um, coat just to really seal that design in and then I let that epoxy coat cure for at least 12 hours and then I went in with my final coat of epoxy I did about 20 mls for my final coat just to get a nice seal to make sure that decal was nice and smooth on the tumbler. First coat, total of 15 mLs of epoxy, let that cure. And then I did my last and final coat, which is 20 mLs of epoxy, and then let that cure. And then I moved on to cleaning up the tumbler. And for the final steps, I take my X-Acto knife and I cut the rim of the tumbler, removing that excess epoxy. And then I wash the inside and outside out with some Dawn dish soap and then I dry it and my tumbler is completely finished. And let me show y'all the final result. And here is the final tumbler. I love how vibrant this tumbler is. You can see the alcohol ink is still as vibrant as it was whenever I placed it on the tumbler. That's because I waited the eight hours to make sure it was dry. And as a reminder, you don't have to duplicate this tumbler completely like how I did. Just use this tumbler as an inspiration. I know whatever you create is going to look beautiful. And if you did like this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more tumbler and crafts videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.